Hello and welcome to Uz Report World News and my name is Bahram Gafarov. President Shavkat Mirzoyev chaired an expanded meeting of the Security Council on Tuesday. The event discussed the results of the activities of the armed forces and military administrative sectors in 2020 and a task for the future. Shavkat Mirziyoev gave instructions on further development of the armed forces and the bolstering of the state's defense capability, the widespread introduction of advanced information and communication technology and innovations. Particularly, the president pointed to the improvement of the activities of the command and control bodies at all levels, enhancing the degree of operational and combat training of troops through the introduction of automated control resources and complexes, ensuring information and cybersecurity. In the field of training military personnel, Enhancing their qualifications and developing military science, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces set the task of improving the methods and techniques of training troops by studying the experience of military conflicts and modern practice of warfare, as well as the history of national military art. The meeting also discussed the development of the defense industry, improving the state border protection system, monitoring and forecasting emergencies, increasing the efficiency of work to prevent accidents and man-made disasters. The Republic of Korea will expedite free trade agreement talks with Uzbekistan, the President of the Republic of Korea, Moon Jae-in, said in his New Year address on Monday. We will expand exchange and cooperation with our new southern and new northern policy partner nations by expediting FTA negotiations with the Philippines, Cambodia and Uzbekistan, the President said. The Republic of Korea ranks fourth in the list of Uzbekistan's main foreign trade partners. Bilateral trade amounted 2.7 billion US dollars in 2019, according to the State Statistics Committee. From January through September 2020, it amounted to 1.5 billion with over 1.5 billion US dollars imports and 34.1 million dollars exports. For South Korea, Uzbekistan was the 35th largest export destination in 2019. Uzbekistan's Jizakh car plant intends to launch the assembly of Chinese crossovers Dongfang and Chang'an before 2024. The factory will produce minibuses and trucks. The design production capacity is 27,000 vehicles per year. The 16.2 million US dollar project is financed through foreign direct investment and loans, as well as 5.6 million US dollars worth of funds from the Uzbek side. It will be implemented in the Jizakh Free Economic Zone. At present, large scale construction work has begun on the territory of the plant. Uzbekistan plans to raise 7.5 billion US dollars FTI in 2021. The Ministry of Investment and Foreign Trade on Tuesday announced plans to commission over 200 large enterprises and creating more than 34,000 new jobs this year alone. All projects are offered to investors based on the opportunities of the regions and their effectiveness is constantly monitored. A special monitoring department will soon start operating under the ministry. It will check the implementation process of projects by the investors. The conference also touched upon export system. In 2021, the volume of export is projected to reach $17 billion. Considering the pandemic, Export Supporting Agency will allocate 100 million US dollars to export companies, providing them with budgets for handling their businesses. Regardless of scale, the agency will assist even small enterprises. Uzbekistan is taking important steps towards the prevention of no communicable diseases with technical guidance and support from WHO. Recently, the country adopted a series of important measures that can significantly improve food safety and the quality of nutrition, reducing many health risk factors for the population. Non-communication diseases such as cancer, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes and chronic respiratory diseases which are closely associated with risk factors such as tobacco and alcohol consumption, unhealthy diets and physical inactivity remain an urgent public health challenge in Uzbekistan. Non-communication diseases are responsible for approximately 79% of all deaths in the country and cardiovascular diseases are the main cause of premature mortality. About a third of the adult population in the country has hypertension. 
and the fifth is at risk of having a heart attack or stroke, stated Dr. Leanne Kupens, WHO representative to Uzbekistan. Furthermore, over a quarter of men smoke tobacco, and approximately half the adult population is overweight or obese. The newly adopted presidential resolution launched a nationwide nutrition policy based on the best evidence-based practices, including the full fortification of flour to enrich it with micronutrients, free of charge provision of micronutrients, vitamins to children and women to support healthy pregnancy and maternity, the introduction of color labeling for ready-to-eat food products, on a voluntary basis from 1st of July 2021 and on an obligatory basis from 2025. The gradual elimination of trans fats with the introduction of new sanitary and epidemiological norms and standards. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo have been postponed to this year. And now, licensed sports tournaments have started again. Some 40 Uzbek athletes have received payments to join the Olympics, according to the National Olympic Committee. The names of the athletes who have received tickets for the upcoming Games in Tokyo will be announced in the second half of June. The athletes who got tickets to the Olympics at the beginning of previous year lost a year due to the pandemic. How will changes in their physical shape and age affect their participation in competitions? Sherzad Toshmarov, vice president of the National Olympic Committee, mentioned the detrimental effect the pandemic has caused on the preparation of our athletes, and the coaches are now delivering intensive training with the athletes. Moreover, for the development of winter sports, along with the construction of ice arenas, work is also underway to build an Olympic training center in the Bostanlik district of the Tashkent region. Uzbekistan on Tuesday warned young TikTokers and their parents against shooting socially unacceptable videos, saying the behavior sets a bad example to others and may lead to administrative arrest. Spokesperson for the Internal Affairs Ministry, Shokruh Giyasev, warned both young people and their parents that the ministry would not tolerate inappropriate behavior in public places and mockery of the public order for the sake of shooting a TikTok video. The violation of public order, viewed as hooliganism in the country, is punishable by up to 15 days in jail, he added. The need for qualified teachers in remote areas has always been one of the topical issues in Uzbekistan. President Shavkat Mirzoyev, in his recent address, paid a special attention to the quality of education in secondary schools. He sees the lack of decent infrastructure and proper facilities in remote villages and schools as the main reason. Soon enough, a special program will be implemented in remote areas to provide schools with qualified personnel and improve the quality of education. For attracting qualified personnel to secondary schools in remote areas, teachers who work in another region are paid 100% more. Article 41st of the Constitution of the Republic of Uzbekistan stipulates that school work is under state control. Therefore, the issue of improving the quality of education in secondary schools in remote areas providing them with qualified personnel should always be under the special control of our state. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo canceled his Europe trip at the last minute on Tuesday after being snubbed by European Union officials. Diplomats familiar with the matter said. Luxembourg's foreign minister and top EU officials canceled meetings with Pompeo because they were embarrassed by the violence at the U.S. Capitol last week. When U.S. President Donald Trump's supporters rioted to stop the certification of the presidential election results, Pompeo condemned the violence but made no mention of the president's role in galvanizing his supporters. Appalled by the deadly riot, Luxembourg Foreign Minister Jean Osselborn called Trump a quote, criminal and political pyromaniac in a radio interview the next day. Luxembourg's foreign ministry confirmed Pompeo's planned stop there was cancelled, but declined to give further details. In Brussels, Pompeo was also scheduled to meet with Belgium's foreign minister and NATO's secretary general. But sources said EU and NATO allies were reluctant to schedule meetings. The EU declined to comment. In a statement, the U.S. State Department attributed the cancellations to transition work before President-elect Joe Biden takes office on January 20th. The State Department declined further comment on Pompeo's rejected meetings. EU officials have said they were exhausted by Trump's unpredictable foreign policies and are eager to build fresh ties with Biden. To be clear, 
The brutality the American people watched with shock and disbelief on the 6th will not be tolerated by the FBI. The FBI Tuesday said it's opened criminal investigations on more than 170 individuals for their involvement in the riot at the U.S. Capitol and aims to charge people with assault and seditious conspiracy. Assistant Director in charge of the FBI Washington Field Office, Stephen D'Antuono. Agents and our partners are on the streets investigating leads not only here in the D.C. area, but also across the country through the FBI's 56 field offices. So even, like I've said before, so even if you've left D.C., agents from our local field offices will be knocking on your door if we find out that you were part of the criminal activity at the Capitol. Investigators are combing social media images that showed hundreds of people swarming the building, attacking police, stealing computers and artifacts, and smashing windows. Seventy criminal cases have been filed so far. Hundreds more could follow. Acting U.S. Attorney Michael Sherwin. I think the scope and scale of this investigation in these cases are really unprecedented, not only in FBI history, but probably DOJ history. We're looking at significant felony cases tied to sedition and conspiracy. The FBI has been releasing photos of suspects and seeking help from the public. Recently, it released images of someone who is suspected of planting pipe bombs at the headquarters of the Democratic and Republican National Committees. When asked by a reporter about the intelligence the FBI had before the events on January 6th, Dantuono said they had a lot. We received a lot of intelligence, like I said in my statement, a lot of intelligence information through all different means. So all that information was shared with our partners, and then we went from there. And the arrests continue. On Tuesday, the FBI in New York arrested Aaron Mostofsky, who wept in court. He was identified by multiple news outlets as the son of New York Supreme Court Judge Shlomo Mostofsky, after he was photographed inside the halls of Congress during the riot. Temporary morgues have been set up in some areas of Britain after local hospitals ran out of space for bodies from COVID-19 deaths. The UK has reported record levels of fatalities and new infections in the last few weeks, fueled by a new variant of the coronavirus that threatens to overwhelm the health system. In the county of Surrey, just south of London, hospital mortuaries have reached their capacity of 600, leading local authorities to set up a temporary morgue there. A spokesman for the Surrey Resilience Forum said the facilities were asked to collect bodies to, quote, avoid patients who have sadly died being left on wards, or as we have seen overseas, left in corridors. He added that there were around 170 bodies currently being kept at the Headley Court facility, formerly a Ministry of Defence site in Leatherhead. The temporary mortuary was first arranged in April during the UK's initial outbreak and has space for 845 bodies. Similar facilities have been constructed or are being constructed, both in London and the southeastern county of Kent. Britain has reported more than 80,000 deaths, the fifth highest death toll globally. Nearly all travelers flying to the United States will need to provide a negative coronavirus test under expanded testing requirements announced on Tuesday. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says that nearly all travelers, including U.S. citizens, will need to show a negative test within three days of departure or documentation of recovery from COVID-19. All travelers aged two and older must comply, except when they're only transiting through the U.S. The CDC will also consider waiving test requirements for airlines flying to countries with little to no testing capacity, including some places in the Caribbean. The order broadens a requirement imposed in December for travelers arriving from the U.K., as a more transmissible COVID-19 variant circulated there. Earlier this month, major U.S. airlines backed the CDC's push to implement a global testing requirement. Other countries began enforcing similar rules for foreign arrivals, including Canada last week. The new rules in the U.S. will take effect on January 26th. Electric vehicle sales look set to zoom in China this year. Industry and analyst forecasts predict a rise of 30 to 40 percent for so-called new energy vehicles, or NEVs. That includes plug-in hybrids and fuel cell cars. 
The boom would follow tepid gains in 2020, seen at about 8%, when health worries kept consumers at home. Now Tesla's Model Y looks like emerging as the big disruptor. The company this month started selling locally built units of the mid-sized SUV, and it's priced them about a tenth less than comparable gasoline-powered vehicles. At about $52,000, the model undercuts rivals from Mercedes, Audi and BMW. All told, industry sources say Tesla is expected to make about half a million vehicles in China this year, more than three times the total in 2020. Its German rivals all have their own new models, however, potentially adding to the boom. And homegrown players are stepping up too. Local brands like Neo and Xpeng are also expanding manufacturing capacity. What happens will be closely watched. China is the world's biggest car market and accounts for about half of global EV sales. Beijing wants all new energy vehicles to account for a fifth of sales by 2025, up from 5% now. It's extended electric vehicle subsidies by two years to help hit that target. If the forecast boom materialises, that could see NEV sales hit about 1.8 million units this year. Wall Street appeared to be in a holding pattern Tuesday as investors wait for the start of earnings season and as the drama in Washington gave an additional reason to pause. Democrats moved closer to impeaching President Trump for inciting the deadly rampage at the Capitol last week. The Dow rose 60 points. The S&P 500 nudged up a point The Nasdaq gained 36. While it may be hard, Randy Watts, chief investment officer of O'Neill Global Advisors, says investors should look past the political turmoil and focus on the bigger financial picture. I think the market's really looking forward. It's really focused on on, on three things, the economy, how big that additional stimulus is going to be, and what happens with COVID. And I think the market is making a bet that by the end of this year, you know, there is going to be more stimulus, the economy is going to be a lot stronger, and COVID is going to be ramping down. So I think investors would be better served to focus on those things looking forward than basically looking at the last administration. That doesn't mean the future is going to be bright for all sectors. Investors fear tech companies like Twitter and Facebook are likely to face more regulatory scrutiny with Democrats controlling the top two branches of government. Social media names were among the weakest for the second day in a row. Twitter and Facebook were both down more than 2%. Looking at some good news, shares of General Motors rose to their highest since coming out of bankruptcy 10 years ago. CEO Mary Barra outlined plans for GM's first electric commercial vans, which will be delivered to FedEx later this year. YouTube announced Tuesday it suspended U.S. President Donald Trump's channel as it violated policies against inciting violence after last week's deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol. YouTube joined several social media companies, which have taken action against the president and some of his supporters, for encouraging or engaging in last week's violence. Twitter and Facebook have removed Trump's accounts, and both have been eliminating content supporting last week's assault. In a statement, YouTube said Trump's channel is now banned from uploading new videos or live streams for at least a week, which may be extended. It's going to be a catastrophic mistake for them. The YouTube ban comes shortly after Trump blasted big tech companies on Tuesday. He accused them of being divisive after their unprecedented crackdown on conspiracy theorists and fringe groups in an urgent effort to prevent further unrest. Twitter has suspended more than 70,000 accounts dedicated to QAnon, a conspiracy group which states that Trump is secretly fighting a cabal of child sex predators. And Amazon said it's working to remove some QAnon products from its online marketplace. Meanwhile, Apple, Google, and Amazon have all suspended Parler, a pro-Trump app where users have threatened more violence from their respective app stores and web hosting services. Like its Japanese alliance partner Nissan, French automaker Renault went into the global health crisis with existing challenges. It had been backing away from an aggressive expansion plan pursued by Carlos Ghosn, its former boss turned fugitive. On Tuesday, Renault said its worldwide sales fell over 21% last year, underperforming a decline in the global car market. But the company insists its turnaround plan is still on track, 
adding that a key focus is on profitability, not sales volume. European sales for the brand fell by a quarter, but sales of electric vehicles in the region were strong and more than doubled from 2019. Renault last year announced plans to cut around 15,000 jobs and restructure French plants in a bid to save 2 billion euros or 2.1 billion dollars. The carmaker wasn't alone in seeing 2020 sales declines. On Tuesday, BMW said it saw an 8.4% fall. Despite demand picking up in the fourth quarter, its European sales were down over 15% for the year. But in China, where the pandemic has been brought under control faster, sales bucked the trend with an increase. Fellow German carmaker Volkswagen said on Tuesday that sales of its core brand dropped by 15%, with lockdowns hitting car dealerships around the world. VW said it had seen sales recovering in December compared to previous months. It's also seen the surge in demand for electric vehicles, with demand for its EV models jumping by 158% for the year. So far, these were the latest news for today. Goodbye. Take care.